Why are all the female leads' names so cool? That part of the book actually had me on the edge of my seat. Secrets were just being spilled. I'm sure he's got a lot of pent up anger. Who am I if I don't talk about romance? I had like tears in my eyes because I was just laughing. Hello guys and welcome back to another video. I am super excited to bring to you guys this one. Before I get into the video, today is November 1st. It is currently 10.18. It's a Wednesday night, which is why I have my retainers on and I have a pimple patch right here. Anyway, so to the video. As you guys can tell from the title, I am going to be reading fantasy books for a week. I have three fantasy books right in front of me that I picked out from my very large TBR. Let me show you the three books that I picked in no particular order. First, I have Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Maniscalco. This is a book that I put in my fall TBR. We're gonna get that done. Second one I have is Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. This is a part of a trilogy. I have the first two books. The third book is not out yet, but I think it will come out later this year. I could be wrong about that. I need to double check. The last fantasy book I will be reading in this video is A Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. E I'm so excited to read this one. I personally think that each of them can hold their own reading blogs, but I wanted to give myself some five star potential reads in one video like maybe three possible five stars who knows i'm gonna start the video by picking the book out and reading it but i honestly have no clue which book to read first you know what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna read the synopsis so this is the one that has war college we have violet oh my god this is so interesting i really want to read this one <sighs> let's read the synopsis to Kingdom of the Wicked. Actually, I read this one five minutes ago when I was picking out which three books. I did not know what this was about when I first bought it. While I was making my decision picking out which three fantasy books I wanted to include in this video, I read the synopsis and I was like, ooh, you know, if I do not already want to get this, this synopsis will make me want to buy it. Another high contender for the first book to read. Once Upon a Broken Heart. What is this one about? How far would you go for Happily Ever After? Um, for as long as she can remember, Evangeline Fox has believed. Why are all the female leads' names so cool? Until she learns that the love of her life will marry another. This is giving Encanto. In exchange for his help, he asks for three kisses to be given at the time and place of his choosing. Okay, this part of the paragraph reminds me of the Bargainer series, at least the first book. But after Evangeline's first promise kiss, she learns that bargaining with an immortal is a dangerous game, and that the Prince of Hearts wants far more from her than she pledged. He has plans for Evangeline, plans that will either end in the greatest happily ever after or the most exquisite tragedy. Oh no! Why do they all sound so good? I want to read every one of them. Good thing is at least I'm reading every one of them. It's just which one goes first. Once Upon a Broken Heart sounds very tragic and sad. I'm so scared we're gonna get more than one male lead. Like there could be a possible second male lead and I do not want second lead syndrome. I'm just going to say this is one, two, three and I'm gonna ask my friend to give me a number from one to three and she can decide for me because I really do not know how to do this. I'm gonna say can't decide which book to read first pick a number from one two three i picked vivian because she usually responds to my messages really quick so she's gonna do this for me okay but she's not answering let me see if my cousin wants to respond you know what i'm not gonna tell my cousin i'm just gonna say pick from one two three that was so fast okay she picked three it's decided i'm gonna read once upon a broken heart first why am i nervous we're gonna start wednesday night i have a whole week to do this before we get on with the video if you do not already know this is going to be a spoilers vlog i will be spoiling everything that happens in all three of these books so if you have not read any of them then do not continue watching this video but of course if you want to read the books that i'm currently reading then you can read the book along with me and i will try to section this video so that you know which section is for which book you guys are advised if you do not want to know what any of these books are about please don't continue watching i don't want to ruin the books for you guys and let's get started with the video 
First of all, the dedication. For anyone who has ever made a bad decision because of a broken heart, look at this gorgeous map. I did not realize you were going to be getting mermaids. Humans? Hold on, she's not human? Wait, what is this? What is this? Warnings and signs. Remove the book cover for now. I'm gonna go really deep into the synopsis first of all. Why did she go to him for help? What help? Is this book in third person? No. Oh no, okay, okay. That's not the official first chapter, so... Part one, the tale of Evangeline Fox. This is such a cool start. We are reading a portion of a newspaper right here. I keep going back to this. Who is the Prince of Hearts? Why do people go to him when they're broken hearted? It is. It's third person. That's fine. It's fine. Hello. Am I blinding you guys? So I'm on page six. Having gotten a lot into it, it seems very interesting. She has found the. Let me turn off the light. She has found the door to the Prince of Hearts. Found the door. Yeah, that makes sense. The door that had supposedly disappeared according to the gossip article. Something is very questionable is why Evangeline would go so far to try to break up the marriage. I mean, do you even know if the boy likes you? Why would you go so far to ruin his happiness just because you love him? Unless he's forced to marry her. Also, do you guys peep the neck reading light that I am? Ooh. <laughs> that I am wearing. I'm sitting in this corner of my bed where I have no light coming from the back of me. Every light that I get from this corner comes from the light that is all the way over there on the other side of my bed. That's why it comes in handy when I have like a light, portable light with me. This is my page without the light. It's a lot brighter on camera, but it's darker in person. When I turn it on, look at that. I can see words now. I can always adjust the color of the light I want. This is the one I usually stick with. And then there is also the brightness level. This is a, that was the dimmest. This is the second one and the brightest. I'm gonna go with the second one because I don't need it so bright. If you guys would like your own pair of neck reading lights, I will have it linked in the description down below. I have the color purple, but they have a lot more options. Just make sure to click the link down below if you would like to get your own neck reading light. And we can all make our reading experience a lot better. I'm assuming that Prince of Hearts is one of the 16 immortal fates. I don't think it takes a genius to make the connection that the prince of hearts one true love could be evangeline it could be obvious but i still want that to be true because on the top of page 11 it says they said his kiss was fatal to all but her his only weakness and he what according to the synopsis it says in exchange for his help he asks for three kisses wait a minute what if when he kisses evangeline he didn't think that she would survive that first kiss oh my god that would be so cool i love how my initial thought was that luke was probably two timing her and was seeing the stepsister and her at the same time but evangeline the hopeful girl she is thinks that he is charmed now that is some shady thing if marisol is really an evil person behind her innocent facade i have not met marisol yet so i'm not going to cast any judgment on her but why am I so quick to cast it on Luke? Even though there's a possibility that he might be under a spell. For some reason, I don't buy it. At least this helps me understand why Evangeline is going this far. She had a thing going with Luke and it's not just her unrequited love that makes her want to stop the wedding. It's that she and Luke actually had something. Now it makes sense why she would be heartbroken. The book is trying to trick me. On page 21, Jack says he will stop the wedding in exchange for three kisses. And then a little bit lower, he says it's not him he wants her to kiss, but it's whoever he chooses and when he chooses it. That's a little bit different from the synopsis where it says three kisses to be given at the time and place of his choosing, not who. So they're not going to be kissing? I don't believe this. I think they will still kiss. I don't know how, but I know it will happen. Luke, I'm on page 45. I don't know exactly what happened to him. Whether he was mauled by the wolf or if he's, you know unalive oh never mind he survived it seems like he deserved it because the girl 
who loves you sacrificed herself for you got turned into stone so all of you guys i don't know how that's possible because Jax did say if she drinks the poison then one person will be saved i don't know how all of them were saved i'll read this and find out unless i read something wrong but the fact that he came back to life because of her and he still wanted to marry the stepsister marisol yeah i think he deserved what was coming i don't even know they had queens in this book no sorry not a queen an empress i am on a chapter nine page 64 it's actually past midnight it's 12 16 i'm gonna go to bed now i feel like we got a lot done let me put i just saw this it's an apple and i'm assuming that this color is the color of her hair she's got a pretty name and gorgeous hair anyway i will continue this tomorrow good morning i had class today and i'm getting ready to pack my bag to head out this is my bag pencil case i have very few things in here i don't normally bring this with me but because i plan on reading outside i brought the tabs in case she's I'm coming with me Minding my business Then it's your stop and I can't help myself Searching the platform for a glimpse of your profile I'd recognize you I haven't given an update on where I'm at since the last time that I talked to the camera I just read up to page 222 i'm about to start chapter 33 i am blowing through this book i really love what is going on in the book a lot of things that happened i did not or would not have ever predicted where i am at right now apollo and evangeline just tied the knot this all basically happened because Jax told evangeline to kiss apollo evangeline kisses apollo and then apollo becomes very smitten by evangeline he proposes to her if you guys don't remember apollo is the prince of the north evangeline is at the north because she is attending the ball she's the ambassador for the meridian empire the ball is where prince apollo chooses his bride he ends up choosing evangeline because of the kiss and the curse that he is under she also brought along marisol i still don't know if we can trust her i think we should just be a little more cautious about the stepsister at this point in the book evangeline has kissed two people the second person that she kissed was lady fortunia that part of the book actually had me on the edge of my seat secrets were just being spilled when lady fortunia was under the spell after the kiss she was acting so nice all of a sudden and then once evangeline asked a question lady fortunia Junior just like snapped out of it and she mentioned something about the whatever arc I swear I read this not that long ago Valor's Valor's I'm gonna say Valor's Valor's arch and how Evangeline is a prophet she will be the one to open the arc and how that cannot happen Lady Virginia literally tried to kill Evangeline at that moment but Jax bonked the lady in the head yeah that was a whole scene fast forward we are on 223 just wanted to pop in here and say that I'm really enjoying the book so far i don't know how this book is going to end i can't believe that evangeline actually tied the knot with apollo i'm going to continue reading to find out and i'm sorry if i look super bright there is something that i failed to mention there was a scene in the book where there was dragons the dragons here are described as squirrels and chipmunks that basically fly so they're like tiny little things and then i'm going to be reading a book later for fling that are actually about big dragons and it's like the image in my mind and i just pictured the cutest little thing ever we are meeting tiberius tiberius who is Apollo's younger brother. Are more secrets going to be exposed? Okay, what is happening? I'm on page 227. Evangeline called Apollo my dearest and Apollo's entire demeanor changed. I don't know if Tiberius is going to be a good guy or a bad guy or maybe it's because he knows his brother very well, but he did point out that either Apollo is really in love with Evangeline or he's bewitched and well, we as readers know that he is definitely bewitched. 
I hope Evangeline is the one in the prophet. There has to be something with her, how people keep talking about rose gold in this whole book. This book is just starting out, so I understand why Evangeline wouldn't be the strong female lead that I would love to read, but I hope she becomes someone who takes more of a stand. Something that makes her main character material that isn't just about her hair. I love this. I love how easily he admits he is jealous. I love these two pages, 234, 235. Why am I feeling so bad for Apollo right now? Why is my heart kind of breaking for him? I guess it sucks because it's Evangeline who's making all these choices that are affecting other people. Apollo better not be dead. If this happens, I really do not see it coming. But there's no way. Oh my god. What if this is necessary in order for people to paint Evangeline as a murderer? <coughs> no, no, no. But I still don't want him to die. I've grown to like the guy. Even though he was a little bit cray cray, but that's because he was under a spell. Okay, why is Jax questioning about the tears that Evangeline spilled? Who is Evangeline? How is this book managing to get even more interesting? This is good. I'm on page 245, about to flip to 246. Okay, never mind. I flipped to 246. You're telling me she doesn't have to kiss Jax. What kind of games are you playing? This man's explanation, it's because it's entertaining. So explain to us, Jax, what happened to Apollo. He better not be dead. I'm starting part three. It's called Chaos. Well, I clearly did not see this coming. Lala being a fate and that she's the unwed bride. Wow. This book is surprising me with new twists at every turn telling me that apollo is really dead the only confirmation that we've gotten is from the daily rumor we need to find the real murder <coughs> what if marisol is the actual murder <coughs> and she and tiberius tiberius was plotting this whole thing now that evangeline is no longer on castle grounds that means that marisol is alone in the castle and <gasps> marisol can twist the whole story and make it be that it is Evangeline who is the cursed bride and not her. Oh my gosh, that is a possibility. I'm sorry Marisol, I'm just throwing you under the bus. But if you really are the one who murdered Apollo, then I'm sorry girl, you're going down. What does Jax mean by, unlike the rest of us, he was never trapped in a deck of cards? I want to know what happened between Jax and the princess because they're all hinting at something. I hope it's not the fact that Jax had feelings with the princess. I hope that's not the case. Anything else I would accept? Oh, I'm so curious. Also, Chaos is so appealing. This character, all of the fates just have that quality to them that is very smooth. Is this girl for real? On page 307, I knew the moment she heard Luke's voice, she would. Oh my god, I just can't believe she's actually doing this. This is honestly so stupid and dumb. Evangeline, you free him and he goes to kill you. I don't know if we can trust what Luke said, but he is a vampire now. He's clearly not the boy that you fell in love with. You free him, that was already the first mistake. Second mistake, you're going to let him live after he tried to attack you and Jax? The only reason why she's alive is because Jax pushed her away. Why is she even heartbroken about this? Years of reading books like this and watching movies like this, when there's a character that you had an opportunity to kill early on and you don't kill them, it's gonna backfire so hard. Evangeline, you have to stop being so soft-hearted. The biggest thing that I would be concerned about is the fact that Jax was bitten. That's what you should be concerned about, not Luke. The only chance that Evangeline has to live and to stay alive is Jax. So girl, get your priorities in order. Jax is a vampire now? What? But he's a fate. Wait, I'm confused. So are they not immortal? I am so confused right now. I'm starting chapter 43. At the end of chapter 42, page 312, Jax is turning. Um, Jax is not a vampire. He survived until sunrise without sucking anyone's blood. Thank God. Honestly, at this point, I really have no idea what is going to happen. Once I think I know what's going to happen, I get surprised. And I like that. I have this much left of the book. I'm on page 335. I didn't even read the article yet, but the headline. <laughs> it was love at first sight. The moment I laid eyes on Marisol Terma Tourmaline, Tourmaline, I knew that we were meant to be together. If people thought about this clearly, they should have this inkling that it could be the younger brother 
who poison the older brother in order to get the crown i feel like that should be what the gossip column should be writing about it's pointing out these suspicions yeah, i just read this portion of the article and the next page so people are upset apollo just died and the younger brother is already planning his own wedding people are actually using the brain oh evangeline thinks that tiberius is under marisol's spell there's one thing Evangeline is, is that she's very trusting. I have never read a prophecy that is so specific. I've never understood prophecies because they're usually in riddles and I'm just trying to like connect everything. But this was a very like word for word prophecy. I want the prophecy to be about Evangeline, but it's so specifically talking about her that a part of me thinks it's someone else. You never know what you're going to get in this I swear, you thought you- When you thought you're finally caught up, but in actuality, more things are still being spilled. The thing with Marisol, she's, she disappointed me greatly. We don't want to talk about her, Tiberius. At least his love for his brother was genuine. Now I'm on page 396 and there's his little girl and Havelock who are telling her that Apollo is not dead. Never mind, it's not a little girl, it's a girl who is about her age. I wish I had perfect memory, then I would know whether or not the tattoo that is on the girl's wrist means something. I'm so close to the end of the book and I'm so, like, I just want to pick up the sequel. But we have other books. One thing this book is doing different is that the soldiers, the guards in this book, are not brainless. I'm done. Whoa. The ending of this book. I would have not seen this coming. How he planned for things to fall into place and it went exactly how he wanted. The Delulu part of me, I really want it to be that every interaction that Jax had with Evangeline during their whole trip together was genuine. I don't want to think that all of it is just in order to get Evangeline to trust him. Anyway, this book was so good. I really liked it. Evangeline's character is very new at a lot of the things that she is facing i don't expect every one of her choices to be one where she can think rationally i mean from like a reader's point of view she obviously will have to make choices where i personally would not agree with but it makes sense that she's doing it the way she is and hopefully as the series progress she she thinks before she acts but i really do like her character as a whole and she's a very fun character to read. One thing that will never fail to amaze me is how smart these characters are when it comes to figuring out the truth. Especially at the end when Evangeline was trying to figure out why Apollo is not dead and whether or not Jax is playing her this entire time. Every time that Evangeline was figuring out and putting the pieces together, I got literal chills because not only was she doing all the mental thinking for me, but things are constantly being spilled that I'm just like, really? How is this book managing to pull all these twists and shocks and surprises and and whatnot into it? Before I move on to the next book, I'm gonna rate this a five stars. I just thoroughly enjoyed everything that I was reading. You know, the thing is, I thought I was prepared. I thought I knew what was going to happen, but no. Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. Five stars, love this fantasy book. Good morning, it's officially Friday. I hope I'm not gonna jinx this, but I really do think I might finish three books within a week really quickly. This is going to be my next fantasy book in this video. I'm going to save Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros for last. In this one, we are going to be getting these princes of hell who are called Wicked. And in Once Upon a Broken Heart, we got the fates. I feel like we are really a part of a fantasy world when we get a new kind of species or these names. Like you know you're in a fantasy world when you're getting things like that. This is so pretty. Let's remove the cover. What are these called? Why do I keep saying this is a book cover? It's dust jacket? Oh my gosh, forgetting words. Each house is named one of the seven deadly sins. I'm on page seven. So much information is being shared right now. Here's what I'm gathering. We have the twins. One of them is silver, one of them is gold. Let me see what this means. 
Hornicello, little horn. It's an amulet. So it's the amulet they are wearing. Amelia's is made of silver, while Victoria's is gold. We also got the story behind the devils and the princes. There are seven princes. The princes are the ones who roam around to find souls for the devil. Grandma says there are four of the princes that they should fear, and it's wrath, grief, envy, and pride. The biggest question I want to ask is what is the ancient prophecy? Another thing in fantasy books, prophecies. It's 10 years later, I'm officially starting chapter 1 and grandma is still alive. Y'all, I'm only on page 15. I know the synopsis lets us know exactly what happens to Victoria. I'm just dreading the moment I read those scenes. I'm not going to be ready when it happens. I just finished chapter 5. We found the sister whose heart has been ripped out. Amelia will do whatever it takes to avenge her sister and I'm going to be there to read when that happens. Also in that same chapter, I think we just met Raph. Every person is just trying to recruit Amelia into their house. They were wearing the horns of Hades around their necks this entire time. I'm on page 142. Wait, if the horns of Hades is supposed to lock hell, then why did the grandma say in the beginning that putting the two horns together would mean twilight and that the demons and the devil they can roam around freely okay i'm very confused i don't know if i'm reading this incorrectly or if we are supposed to be confused i've read further and apparently the horns of hades can do more than just lock the gates of hell i'm on chapter 20 now and the first line you look like hell which rap that is no way to say hi I mean, he was bound to that circle for three days. I'm sure he's got a lot of pent up anger. I'm on page 196. Girl, don't be acting like you're not staring at his body. Amelia is proving herself very worthy of being a witch. I'm on page 223 and Amelia is using her powers to get the truth out of the messenger. The way she is using Raph's anger to feel her truth spell. Oh my god, I like this part because I finally get to see her using her magic that is not necessarily good even Raph himself is shocked yes amelia show people what you were capable of excuse me i'm on page 233 i think is how you say his name but anir anir either one just revealed that <laughs> well accidentally revealed that Raph should finish the marriage bond with amelia she didn't realize that the latin words she used in that spell meant to bound them together in matrimony <laughs> i love this how did this book just turn into a marriage trope isn't he just being the sweetest here he's definitely letting us see more sides of him i don't think i'm making things up when i say that raf is becoming very soft I continued reading last night, I'm chapter 35 now. In the beginning it said that the devil is not allowed to leave hell and that the princes roam around to try to find souls for him. I don't remember where I read it but it said that pride was the one who was cursed by the witch and it's because he stole something from her and it's her daughter. So pride and the witch's daughter, they fell in love and then something happened. So my confusion is what is pride's role is he just one of the princes of hell or if he is the devil that is not allowed to escape hell we're getting vampires in this book too i'm on page 295 only have this much left well is it yeah i do have that much look obviously rap has other intentions for wanting to help pride i'd rather have the betrayal in this book rather than in the other two books because at that point i want their relationship to be progressing i want them to have this build up of romance so we can have the fireworks in the third book so let's get the betrayal over with in the first one and then we can have a smooth time in the other two books like i know what you're trying to do you're trying to sow some mistrust here and whatever you're trying to do envy it's not gonna work i'm on chapter 40 now 
fireworks are starting early. I just read the bottom of 307. Amelia, girl, you get it. I don't think I mentioned earlier on in the video, but I always did have the suspicion that Antonio might not be one of the good ones. I thought it was very strange how he always knew when there was a target or when there was a dead body. I just felt it was very convenient that he just knew every time. That's because he's the one who did the people I need to know what he is is he just a regular human who actually removed people's hearts because he believed in such a big cause or if he is something else wait so the devil is pride i am so confused i'm on page 360 you know what at this point i have no idea who to believe what if raf is actually the devil and that is why he needs only one soul in order for him to roam free it makes sense in that regards because the princes are the ones who are roaming to collect souls for the devil and coincidentally it is Raph who needs that one last soul. On page 364, Raph is standing there. He looks fine. I can't tell if he's pretending. Is this the betrayal that we're getting? I finished. At the very end, Raph is taking Amelia to hell to House Pride because she is officially the queen of hell. Now, I am going to place the dust jacket back on to the book. Before I move on to fourth wing, we need to talk about this book. I hope this answers whether or not I like it, and it's that I will be reading the sequel. There were some parts that I thought were very confusing. It might just be for me. There were a lot of information being told to us. A lot of characters were introduced and mentioned, and I felt like I had to keep tracking every person that made an appearance. I learned my lesson from reading Once Upon a Broken Heart that I needed an extra tab to just note characters so all of my dark ones are basically character introductions so when a character i've never met before is being introduced i just tab it to know like okay this is a new character we've never heard of him before let's just make a note of it so the thing about this one is that there was a lot of information i was constantly being fed characters new findings about spells and witches all of these princes of hells and their ways it was a lot but nonetheless i still enjoyed it some parts were boring and it's those parts besides all of that this was a very good book it was a very good introduction into this world into this series i hope the second book we will get more of the moments between raf and amelia despite the fact that raf and amelia had moments in this they had minimal conversation that felt personal and that was only towards the end so hopefully in the second book we can have more build up and more deeper connections being made i don't think i'm going to rate this five stars because i rated once upon a broken heart five stars i don't think this one was as exciting and it did not pump me up like once upon a broken heart did i'm going to rate this four stars i also cannot give this book a five stars because i was very confused i don't know if it's the wording there were just parts that i kept questioning like am i understanding this right i was just waiting for some things to be explained and it really was not explained in this one i hope by the end of this series when i finish it i will have all my answers and i will know what i read that is all to say this is a four stars and last but not least i'm gonna be reading fourth wing by rebecca yaros next i'm not gonna start right now because i need a break i feel like my head is not in the real world i feel like i need some time to recalibrate i'll see you guys when i start reading i also need to go on to goodreads and update that i finished kingdom of the wicked hello guys what a disappointment i am what is with this appearance first of all it's currently tuesday i was going to start reading yesterday but i ended up not doing it because honestly i had a lot of household stuff to take care of i'm not going to give you guys the whole spiel but it's currently tuesday night and i'm just starting the book not the first time i'm pushing the deadline point is i am starting the book and i'm now finding out that violet has a sister and her name is Mira. This book is already so interesting right off the bat. She trained to be a scribe, but her mom's like, no, you're gonna be a writer. And on page three, we find out that her hair is silver on the ends. Why does that build character? 
apparently she's got a brother too. I'm on page five and I've got to say the book has a lot of potential to be very funny. I am on page 16 and I hope Dylan makes it. Oh, I hope he gets married. I'm already forming attachment to characters. I don't know if they are going to be important or not. No, Dylan, oh my god. I didn't know him for long, but he was memorable. It's currently 10 p.m. and I'm getting ready for bed. I have a, what is this, a smooth, don't mind that. Currently on page 25, I have not made a lot of progress. I had to go to class and I just came back not too long ago. I took a shower and I ate. Now I'm reading again. 25 pages in and today is Wednesday night. So clearly we have to extend once again. It's not like I set a limit for myself. I just said I was gonna read fantasy for a weekend. I'm doing that. I might be reading other books on Kindle, but I am reading physical fantasy books. And I might be a little behind schedule, but what is new? Nothing. Anyway, I am still feeling the effects of losing Dylan so soon. I knew the moment that we were introduced to that character that he was not going to make it, but I wanted to have hopes and clearly hopes just died. Now, our girl is walking on, is it parapet? I think that's what it's called. Kudos to Violet for making it. Is she going far? I can't tell, but she's like reciting a whole bunch of things. Jack is way too overconfident. If someone had to go, it should have been Jack. Is he for real? Oh. I know they said not to make friends, but Jack. Oh, he's going to be a menace. I know he's going to survive this, and then we're going to have to deal with his ass for the next four books. Because I read one of your comments, and I found out through one of you that this series is a five book series. And that the second book was coming out. Hold on. It came out yesterday. So when I finish this one, there will be a second book to read. But then there's three, four, five. That is not out yet. The moment I read that comment, I was already making this video. So... I wanted to commit to reading for free despite the fact that I would be left on a cliffhanger. If there's one book I want to be present for and like everyone else waiting for the next book having already read the previous books, it would be this series because I feel like I want to really enjoy this one and I'm 25 pages in. I already know what characters I like, what characters I don't like. You know what? Let me just continue reading because I'm just talking and not reading. Girl, you have to go. Jack is right behind you. I still can't believe Jack just did that. Is there a magical trampoline down there to save the people who have fallen? Because I'm hoping this is pulling a divergent and if you fall, there's something down there to catch you. Poor boys. Okay, but seriously, what is Jack's problem? Finally, I know what threshing is. Threshing is when the dragon finds who they will bond with. On the top of chapter 3, which is a few pages back, I'm on page 29, it basically says that blue dagger tail, which is a blue dragon, are the most ruthless and this one in particular is rare. Don't I think that violet deserves the best? Oh my gosh, is there a violet colored dragon? I don't think that even exists. Even if dragons are fantasy creatures, even a purple dragon sounds unrealistic. Why did I just think of Barney. <coughs> Barney is a dinosaur and I just, I upgraded Barney without even realizing. It is the next day. Page 64 now, but I wanted to come in and let you guys know that I am thoroughly enjoying this book so far. I know it seems as if I am going through this book really slowly, but truth is, I do have a lot of things that are happening right now, so I'm only reading when I have the time to read and it's these stolen moments that I get to read and it's usually at night so this is when I get bulk of the reading done second of all I don't know why but every time I read a few chapters and I have to pause I get so excited to continue after the mini break that I have I don't know how to describe it but it's a very good feeling the reason why I popped in here is to make sure I get it out there that I totally and truly admire Violet's intelligence. Her scribe training is going to be something that is going to get her through becoming a writer. I just love witnessing her intelligence and how she just knows what questions to ask. 
of course i also want to comment on the romance in this book who am i if i don't talk about romance i want the enemies to lovers and i want satan and violet to be a thing and i'm begging that this book and this series will not be doing a love triangle i'm currently on page 83 i think this is the part in the book that violet starts questioning the secrets behind the authorities i love this they're already seeing different sides of each other Aiden is realizing violet is very different from her mother and violet is seeing a side of Satan that is merciful let's say that i think i understand this book now i am not going to form attachments anymore every time i see a character i like from now on i'm going to think twice about it after dylan and now orale mm -mm. i know i learned my lesson mavis it's not cheating it's just violet using her brains violet did what she had to do if anything it proves that she deserves to be here that she would be an asset because look at her using her brains and using every resource that she can find for some reason i feel like she's not going to bond with a dragon at threshing it was mentioned early on that there was less than a hundred dragons who are going to participate in threshing and i don't think her dragon is going to be there at first i wanted her to bond with a blue dragon but then after mentioning the black dragon and how the old black dragon has not bonded with anyone else aside from his previous owner who passed away why do i want her to bond with that dragon also anything to keep jack from bonding with whatever he wants to bond with is good with me wait threshing starts now i'm on page 144 and the dragons are there oh my gosh is this happening i'm so excited you know what would be really cool is if dragons are fighting for violet imagine three dragons trying to fight each other to bond with you and what is this about feathered tail i was wrong this is not threshing i think right now they're just walking down a path to look at all the dragons that will be there at threshing this is obviously not something funny but on page 146 on the top just the description of how the dragons are you know in a row and how they are perfectly still that they might be gargoyles i don't know why but i just picture something really funny then i thought to myself imagine there was a dragon school and it's only dragons who are training <laughs> to be dragons that's not funny Tynan. <laughs> you know what he's not as bad as jack but his comments oh my goodness like can he get torched oh uh, okay i think what they're doing right now is presentation and the other one was gauntlet a small golden dragon okay maybe this is potential for violet as much as i love being right i love being wrong as well when it comes to books because yes keep, don't let me think that i know everything let's keep my ego in check is there a reason why this is golden do these people not value their lives just because it's a small dragon and it's gold, I don't know what's wrong with that, but apparently these people have problems with it. Are they not afraid to be barbecue? Because Tynan and Luca, please smoke them up. Oh my god, that was so cool. On page 152, when the green dragons were sniffing Violet, Jack talks a big game, but he can't demonstrate honestly can violet just bond to multiple dragons on page 164 when she notices that the golden dragon does not have claws and it's just the paw <laughs> i mean no offense but can't she just have like a pet dragon and then one where she rides <laughs> i'm sorry this is not funny i had like tears in my eyes because i was just laughing oh my gosh I'm on page 166. What? Oh, oh. I am rendered speechless. This is so epic. The golden one tucked under an enormous scarred black wing. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I need to contain myself. Well, can we also talk about how Tynan's mouth hangs open and he staggers backward, his head tilting so far back it's nearly perpendicular to his torso. But people, let's talk about the chills that I got from reading this page. I don't even come close to reaching its ankle. Okay, first of all, how tall is Violet anyways? If she's size seven, she can't be that short. <gasps> oh my God, it is two dragons. Wait a minute, I have so many questions about the gold dragon now. Does the golden dragon turn black when it gets bigger? But they said that other dragons will not allow a baby dragon to bond with a human. Hmm interesting okay but how did no one see the black dragon coming wait, wait wait is she gonna bond with him 
Hold on, hold on, hold on. It's like I've never read an exciting book in my life, which is false. I need to set you guys up so that we can read the scene together. Oh my gosh, I'm getting so hot. Oh, okay, <clears throat> I'm on page 167 for anyone who wants to know. Violet, when she said, well, that's a statement on his character, not mine. Oh. Isn't she such a queen? Right now she's talking to the black dragon. Um, she didn't seem to possess this when it came to the golden dragon. Oh, there's Jack still though. Jack's still out there. <laughs> the dragon's like, you're bleeding. Stop it. It's not that easy, dragon. He says, get on my back. <laughs> Why am I getting emotional at this scene? Oh my gosh, she's bonding with the black dragon. A little girl's going up. <laughs> And she gets the biggest, baddest dragon of them all. Can you believe this? People have to respect her now. And Jack, we're coming for you. This book wastes no time getting rid of characters. That's for sure. So Jack better be gone by the end of this book. <laughs> Get on your back. Have you seen you? Do you have any idea how huge you are? <laughs> this is so funny. Violet is not afraid. Honestly, has she ever been afraid? The people she should be afraid of, she's never really shied away from talking back. Technically, there are 102 dragons and two of them are sticking with Violet. Oh, the golden one is compared to a playful puppy. All it has are its teeth. <gasps> this dragon stretched out its front legs so that Violet can crawl on. Isn't that just the sweetest thing? I need to see this. I need to see this on video. I think this is going to be a series or a movie. Imagine this scene. Oh, oh, this is going to be such an amazing scene to watch in, um, on the show or movie, whatever it's going to be. This whole chapter. Oh my god, I will watch the movie just for this chapter. Wait, so the golden dragon did not actually bond with her or anyone? Stop. Why is this such a precious moment? The way the golden dragon is trying to keep up. <laughs> um, you know this makes me this makes me think about a few things. Now that she's bonded with a dragon and the dragon can, you know, invade her thoughts. No such thing as privacy. My brain just went to the dirtiest part, but it is a genuine question. When Violet is intimate with someone else does this mean that the dragon that she's bonded to will also you know hear what violet's thoughts are that's a whole other level of bonding zayden's dragon and violet's dragon they're gonna have it's gonna be fire why is goldie talking to violet how is she able to hear is it really true what they bonded to it's the dragon with an attitude. How adorable. The golden dragon just gave her name. I wanted this to happen and I'm getting it. But seriously, what is the relationship between Andarna and Tyron? I wonder if this has happened before or if Violet is the first one to ever bond with two dragons. She would be the first. Girl is special. Day needs to stop telling Violet what to do. It's not his position to be telling Violet who to bond with. Like. Back off. Why would Zayden get her killed? The dragons are a mated pair. You know what's really funny? It's that Dane keeps asking Violet to break the rules, but he himself wouldn't do it even if his so-called childhood best friend was in danger. Dane, you really lost a lot of credibility. And Dora is a baby. Oh my god. She's two. Oh, but if secrets get out about feather tails, the humans are gonna hunt. It's not gonna look good. We have to keep her safe. Satan told Violet that she has incredibly touchable skin. I have to let you guys know that Zayden, Zayden is just all about wanting to kiss his girl. He even made a saddle for her. That is love. I'm on page 362. Looks like she's getting her signet right now. Just as lightning splits the sky with a terrifying crack of thunder. Okay, Jack's dead. And then she's a lightning wielder. She's got everything that is so enviable. I love their bad idea. Keep giving me more. I really do not want to finish this book. I want to keep going. I love Violet even more for what she said on page 393. She is not allowing miscommunication to ruin their relationship. We don't know how I could possibly love Violet's character even more, but her openness and honesty on page 410 
it's so raw and vulnerable and I just love how she lets Zayna know her true feelings and how she's not gonna be afraid to let him know where her heart stands and it's so beautiful and now knowing that this is going to be a five book series it makes me so scared to read what is going to happen in their future I forgot that Dane planted one on Violet until Zayden brought it up I was like what is he talking about that happened completely erased completely forgotten in my mind oh my god i'm literally tearing up my heart is breaking holy crap oh my god i am not going to like any characters from now on this is so wrong oh my gosh liam my baby and his dragon the more i keep reading the more i'm crying this is Miss Rebecca. This is the downside of bonding. I'm gonna wake up tomorrow with swollen eyes. So sorry guys. Outside it's like so noisy right now, but when I'm feeling inside here <sighs> Thanks now I know in the other books. I cannot be too careful. I need to keep my guard up Can you guys see it's like past midnight right now, but I am not going to bed until I finish this book I'm sorry. I look like a I don't even care. This is not important. This is. Chapter 39 is Satan's POV. Every five seconds, I remind myself of Liam. I don't know why, but I feel like it's her brother. Guys, I see the words little sister. Welcome to the revolution. And I'm done. So I will see you guys tomorrow morning and talk about this book and end this video. Let's talk about what happened. So last night, I finished Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros and if I can give this more than five stars, I would. But the highest I can rate it is five stars. So five stars. Words cannot even express how I feel about this book. I purposely read a few chapters, took breaks, and then went back to it because I didn't want to speed through it and feel like no time has passed. I wanted to savor every moment that I was reading this because every moment was just gold. That's why it's a gold book. I love Violet's character. I have mentioned it already that I really love Violet's ability to communicate and be honest about her feelings with Zayden. And it's this communication that I put Violet on another pedestal. Although how she kept giving Dane multiple chances, that part I will never understand. This book was just really exciting from beginning to end. Some parts were more exciting than others, like the presentation, the threshing. The last few chapters was insane. I I've never felt such a rush of emotions. I was rooting for them and I was trying to help some characters up. Next thing I know, I'm grieving characters. It was a roller coaster. When Rebecca puts emphasis on certain characters, it means that the next moment they're dead. It's been a while since I've cried for a character in a book. Liam's death really hurt. Even the dragons. I'm gonna look forward to reading the sequel to this. I just really need Violet and Zayden to have the happy ever after. Please give that to me. Don't take any of the characters away. Make me believe in happy ever afters because I need this. If it's gonna be five books of action, romance, and tragedy and drama then i am going to need it all to be worth it i'm gonna have to see how i'm gonna read the sequel anyway i look forward to it and knowing that indarna has grown it's gonna be so fun violet's gonna be able to ride another dragon hopefully she's gonna have two dragons two options as modes of transportation before i end the video i'm gonna bring all the books out and go through how i rated each and every one of them i read once a broken heart by stephanie garber first and i rated is five stars it is still five stars after a week or so my rating has not changed kingdom of the wicked by carrie maniscalco i have this as four stars on goodreads and it's still gonna remain four stars and lastly i read four fling by rebecca yaros five plus stars after reading it for myself i totally get it oh my god this might be one of the best books i've read this year I really did feel a whole range of emotions reading this one. So here you have it, the three fantasy books that I read in, well, more than a week, but you get it. I did not read only fantasies, but this is 
the three fantasy physical books that I did read. I'm gonna be looking forward to the day that I pick up the sequels to these three books and you can look forward to watching that video whenever it comes out so don't forget to subscribe to this channel and thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and let me know your reactions and thoughts in the comments down below and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!